Cutting and trimming videos is a very important process in visual effects, especially for filmmakers, as editing makes up a big portion of the feel and direction of the film. Editors want their tools to be not only great, but most importantly, invisible, so we can focus on the story. In this video, we're gonna go through the video editing software that VFX studios in the movie industry are using right now to work on their projects. Avid Media Composer is one of the first few non-linear editors that started in the early 90s, allowing Avid to prove itself as the major digital cutting solution in the film industry, with a large user base in the Hollywood market. Since then, Avid Media Composer was and still is the predominant video editing tool used in studios for TV and feature film productions. The process of cutting and, and shooting kind of just goes on concurrently with the visual effects work. And that's interactive, so as you learn stuff from the visual effects you shoot, you make adjustments as what, with what you're shooting. And then as I'm cutting those scenes together, I'm prioritizing heavy lifting visual effects work on a Marvel movie. So de-aging effects, full CG characters, anything we can start working on that we know we're going to need for the trailer, which is going to come at us a lot earlier than the movie, or if we need something for, you know, narrative effect, like design work, like designing how Thanos would work, it took us a long time, and he, we had to start on him early because we wanted him to be perfect. Its powerful tools are capable of handling complicated editing and visual effects. It was also used to edit big summer releases such as Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is a movie made by Marvel Studios and earned more than $622 million at the box office. Avid was also used on Tom Cruise's popular movie Mission Impossible Fallout, where we can see great work done by Eddie Hamilton. The movie's film editor showcases just 19 minutes out of 148 minutes of the movie's full length. Eddie, along with the filmmaking crew, used six different mono dialogue tracks, four mono sound effect tracks, in addition to six stereo sound effect tracks. Just by viewing the timeline at the first glance, we can see how crowded it is with all those tracks, in addition to transitions and effects. All of this shows that Avid can handle huge loads of pressure, which makes it live up to its name. On the other hand, Adobe Premiere existed almost as long as Avid Media Composer, but Adobe didn't begin reaching professional markets until they renamed it Premiere Pro. And since then, they started expanding their target customers outside of Avid's background. In fact, it wasn't until the last decade that Premiere Pro made its first step into the Hollywood movie industry and became now Avid's rival in popularity. Adobe actually kept adding more and more capable features and AI-powered solutions that automate tedious tasks, in addition to the tutorials and pro tips suggested within the software's interface. Adobe Premiere Pro was used in many big Hollywood movies, such as Gone Girl, directed by one of the best filmmakers of our modern time, and this guy is David Fincher, a Hollywood filmmaker that received 40 nominations for the Academy Awards, in addition to many other awards as well. We have Marvel fans' favorite character, Deadpool, directed by Tim Miller. So I go out and I ask questions, and one of the people I ask questions to is David Fincher. Um, I've known him for a long time, and I was talking about what he thought was the best editorial package to use. Coincidentally, he had just finished using Adobe Premiere to cut Gone Girl, and David saying what a good experience he had led me to say, well, you know, I want to I, I wanna do that too. And of course, Deadpool ended up being edited in Premiere Pro. Both directors and many others embrace Adobe Premiere Pro for how capable and feature-proof it is, and most importantly, how seamlessly it works in conjunction with After Effects, which creates a very fast and efficient pipeline for filmmakers. Another software is Apple's Final Cut Pro, which was a predominant video editing software in the movie industry. Since the early 2000s, it has been widely utilized to cut big-budget movies like the movie 300, starring Jared Butler as the courageous Spartan King. The movie brought up iconic cinematic shots and thrilling dynamic war battle scenes. Another one of my favorite movies is 500 Days of Summer. Final Cut Pro was used to make unique transitions between dated events in the movie, and the very famous scene of the expectation versus reality to portray the main character's desired events in comparison to what really happened, all done in a very seamless dynamic way and the list of movies that use Final Cut Pro goes on and on. This software was still underappreciated in Hollywood compared to Avid Media Composer, until the launch of Final Cut Pro X, which killed its predecessor, and because it lacked many features of the classic, it is safe to say that Final Cut Pro 10 is still by far the most predominant video editing software on Mac, 
which is also reliable and easy to learn and use, even though there isn't much you can do with other software such as Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. If you are a VFX artist or an aspiring one who needs assets for your next shots, Action VFX might be the solution for you. It is used by a lot of big budget VFX studios and some of its elements have been used in big budget movies such as Jumanji in addition to Avengers Endgame. Action VFX is a website that provides a huge library of high quality well curated stock of VFX elements for a very affordable price. They have an extensive list of all VFX elements such as muzzle flashes, explosions, dust, sci-fi elements, particles, lens flares, blood, you name it. And they have a lot of things you will need for your next VFX production. In addition to that, the website offers a very affordable subscription plan where you can get access to the whole library for only $14 each month. Furthermore, there is a ton of free stuff that you can download for free. And by the way, most of the elements are 60fps 4K resolution. If you are interested in Action VFX, you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.